So we got in last night and did a video on the quick unboxing of a Lux flight controller by Lumineer. And got this bad boy from our main mans down there at Atmospheric Adventures in Florida. We met up with these guys at XDC2 for the first time and tch, when I couldn't find it somewhere at Multi Rotor Manian or my regular spot or py Pyro Flip RC, I bounced over. Guess what? Atmospheric Adventures had them in stock, ready to ship. Ordered Thursday, got it last night. Big, big ups, guys. Great job. So, we've got it. We've gotten our Sasquatch Labs Shuriken here. It's opened up. I went ahead and pulled out the CC3D that was in there. Everybody knows or should know that I'm running my CC3Ds. Yes, call me a noob or call me whatever, but the hardware is there. Why not utilize it? Just say it. Put whatever firmware you want on. Um, you'll see that I run a multi-rotor mania PDB on most of my other builds that I don't run a heavier duty style one. This is a nice, clean, simple PDB for multi-rotor mania. You'll notice that the pads actually have grooves to where you can stick the wires through the grooves to run really low profile. Um, it's just a quality PDB. I mean, you know Multi-Rotor Mania, you know they do, they do what they do. You can actually solder from underneath or the bottom. In fact, I have my uh, Free Sky Voltage, you'll see it kind of poking out there, uh, sensor what, soldered to the bottom. So you can even go ahead and do your solder on your XT60 off to the angled side like that to avoid your props and keep it nice and clean and short. So check out their little PDBs. They're awesome. And they come with their Multi-Rotor Mania 180, 250s, all their kits, I believe, have them. So got that prepped up. We took out the other stuff. And now what I'm left with is we're going to do how to install or solder up this flight controller, at least for my setup. So in this build, this is how we're going to do it. I got me a fresh clean Lumineer Lux controller, ready to go. We will have to do a quick solder on the back. You'll notice here, what we're going to do is we're going to solder the 5 volt and the middle pad there, and that's going to connect 5 volts to our RX battery source. And then we're going to solder up the middle solder of the pad there with the SRX or Serial RX uh, pad and that's going to send the proper signal for our S bus. So I am no flipping this upside down and I've got my digital soldering iron and it's heat heated and set at 700. We're going to see if that's going to be enough. I think it should be. I typically do that with all of my smaller wiring sets and PDBs and such. So Fix some of these wires. I'm gonna have to go through and pre tin real quick. Notice that my soldering iron only touches the wire for one second before it starts sucking in the solder to tin it. If your soldering iron has to stay on the wire for longer than that, stop. Check your soldering iron. Make sure your soldering iron is the right temperature. Now you'll notice I don't have my fan blowing right now because it makes a lot of noise, but I should have my fan blowing that away. I'm just going to hold my breath whenever I'm soldering. And I also should be wearing some safety goggles, but, oh wait, there they are. Never mind. I got them. So there we go. All right. Back to pre tin. I'm actually pre tinning oh, that was not good. Whew, I threw, that's a nut, see, that's why you wear your safety goggles and why you're careful. I just threw a bunch of solder on the flight controller, but it's all good. All right, so I'm pre tinning all my ESC wires is what you're seeing actually. I've already got also some power wires here. So those are all ready to go. Now, we're gonna do the soldering up of Here we go. Make this thing talk in Serial RX. So we're going to put a dab there, dab there, and then we joined them. Done. Don't overdo it. I actually did put a little too much on there, but it'll be fine. It's not a big deal. If you just keep a little bit on your tip.
Shit. Still got, I got a lot on there, but it's fine. Oh, man, and then I just crossed into the three, so now they're all three soldered up. All right, don't do that. That's okay, we're gonna do a little lesson here. And how to fix this if you don't have any, <laughs> um, if you don't have any de-wick or soldering wick for taking solder off, desoldering. There's an easier way and that is Take some old or some wire you're not using and fan it out, and then use it. To clean the solder off. All right, there we go. Clean the solder off, and we got it right. There we go. Bet. All right. So, as you can see, we just soldered up the SRX to the middle pad and the 5 volt to the middle pad. So now we will get 5 volts and serial RX signal to the RX and 5 volt pad. Alright, so they provide you with these O-rings to put on your standoffs. And these O-rings are going to protect or keep some of the bad vibes out of your flight controller. All right, so I've chosen to mount this flight controller a specific way, and the way that I wanted it was I have the XC60 on this side, so I want the USB on this side. Um, so it's fine, the arrow is going to be facing actually the correct way for me, but if you wanted to mount it with the arrow going another direction or something else, more than happy to. You just go readjust it in the firmware, which we'll do later. Um, so here we go. We have our flux pin and we are going to start lining up where the motors are going to be. So because I have this thing facing the correct direction, the motor wires will actually go into the four corners, which is really pretty cool. It's much easier and better than some of the other flight controllers where they're just in one specific location. So all your wires have to be different lengths. Um, in this situation, you could actually trim down your wires pretty short. I'm going to leave mine at length for now because on my builds, I typically build it and get it flying right. And then I'll go back and kind of clean it up as I add more components. Um, for instance, if I add an OSD later to this, then I'll go in and I'll kind of shorten out all the wires and make it cleaner. So for now, we're just going to flux the motor pads for sure. We know we're going to do the RX pads, motor pads on this side. And the battery pads are the other one that we're going to do. So um, battery is actually going to be... The battery is actually going to be on the bottom side. I already pre-tinned and have a couple of wires that are hooked up to my PDB that's going to get direct voltage from the battery, in this case 4S power. So I'm going to, on the bottom side, solder up the one that says battery, I'm going to tin. Again, notice it's only a few seconds before my solder touching the pad is hot enough. So I've pre-tinned it. These wires are also just a little long, but I want them to have some kind of give to where if I crash, it doesn't rip one out. And also if I say crash and have to replace the standoffs, I can actually kind of replace the standoffs in the field without having to go in there and disconnect all the wires or trim them. So for now, I'm just gonna see how it works with the size wiring that I have. Again, my builds evolve every time I put something new on them. It's always good to use a pair of pliers when you're soldering these little wires to hold them in place. There we go. Perfect little solder. There we go. I'll be honest, I just, I'm not used to soldering like these nice little flat pads. I'm used to soldering the pinholes, so 
it's much easier on the pinholes sometimes when you're used to those but all right so we have battery power now there we go so battery power now we'll flip that over now mount it in the direction that we had it Now it's super important when you're soldering this thing, man, do not hold on the pads longer than a few seconds. I mean, you hold on there for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds, and you're gonna fry something out possibly. So be very careful. I'm not the best solderer, but I try to do my best. All right, um, let's start with the motors over here. So we're gonna do these pads. Remember to use enough solder for the size wire you're using, but not too much solder. So like when I'm doing my RX wires, I'm not putting too much solder. In fact, I got a little more than I'd like, but um, they're really thin and small. And so I'm not trying to put like huge globs of solder for the little couple of wires. So I have all these set up. Start with motor one. Signal wire goes on the one. Ground wire. See, this is an example of I have a lot of solder there, but that's fine. It's a nice heavy, heavy duty joint, right? Same here with the ground. I used way too much wire and too much solder, really. It's kind of awfully close. And I definitely recommend having materials ready as far as soldering wick. Obviously, I already talked about the rosin, or the resin, uh, rosin, whatever, flux. That's a better one. I don't know. If you spot yourself doing something, then why not fix it? <laughs> I'll go back and fix the other ones in a minute. This makes for a really... I already like this, man. It's a nice, clean build tech format as far as using this flight controller. I like the solder pads the way they're set up. Uh oh. See like right there. Too much run. Uh. Another reason why I trimmed the ends a little bit was being that I knew I was having too much solder, an issue, I trimmed them hoping to kind of fan out and kind of give the, uh, the wire a little more space or a little more um, clean wire for the solder to actually wick into off of the pad. So a little technique if you want to use for over solder not having everything with you. Like oh, that is a dirty one.
All right, we got all four motor wires, and now I also have a servo style wire harness that I've trimmed Trim down the, the wire. wire. Now, my RX is at the rear, it's gonna be back here. So you'll notice that I'm actually gonna solder these but kind of backwards, if you would, so it doesn't bend the wires. Because if I would have soldered them facing this way, I then would have had to bend them back towards the um, RX. So in this way, there's not going to be any stress on the solder points. They'll just be there. They should be straight. So, here we go. Hey man, so y'all saw what we did there. 15 minutes or so, got this thing soldered up, ready to go, buttoned up. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I know I showed the whole thing. I didn't fast forward through much. Uh, really wanted to kind of show you guys me bumbling through it just like you guys would. Want to say a big thank you, Atmospheric Adventures. Thanks for having stuff in stock. Thanks for getting it to me quick. Thanks to, uh, obviously, Sasquatch Labs, Kev, Ty, those guys. Thank you for getting me the Shuriken back in December again. Um, it's going to hopefully be even a better quad now that I'm flying it with this new flight controller and be able to test some of the uh, other firmwares out on it. Uh, Multirotor Mania, big ups. Titan Motors, that's what I got on here. Got these guys in last week. Great 3D. TPU mounts. There's just all kinds of good stuff in here, man. Uh, VAS, IB Crazy, Hobby Wireless. Good stuff. Go fly smart, fly safe, fly for fun, fly FPV. I'm going to go fly Lux. Peace.